This is the last time I'm going to speak on Amber Geyer and Botham Jean. The brother, I can't even look at that video no more. I tried to watch that video again. I wanted to watch it to see if I was seeing what I really thought I was seeing. But right now, I cannot stand the sight of Botham's brother. That sabotage and betrayal at its finest. Now, I applauded the moms when she was on stand. <clears throat> and it almost appeared that she was building a case for after the verdict and after the punishment going after the Dallas Police Department in a lawsuit. But then the son got up there. But to think about it, there's a lot of crazy things that was going on during that trial. From the jail guard stroking her hair to the judge allowing the castle law to the judge hugging Amber Geyer and giving her a Bible. And then the brother forgives her, says he loves her, says he wishes that she didn't go to jail. He didn't want her to go to jail. He only wished her the best. And then wanted to give her a hug. That makes no sense. And I'm almost wondering. Now I've heard some people say that. They don't think that he's dead. I'm not going to go that far. But I will say it almost seems like. This was. A set up murder. This was a hit. Because there's a lot of people that seem to be on the murderer's side. She got up there, put on that little act with those crocodile tears, and they felt sorry for her. The brother sat there and held her. And every time they got ready to, to break, one of them grabbed each other again. It was almost like they were about to have sex. It was almost like he had an attraction for her. And she had an attraction for him. And then the moms in the background, <clears throat> I'm assuming she was let she let out that cry because of disgust, of surprise, because he did say his family didn't know his feelings regarding. Amber Geyer and felt that he forgave her and he loved her and did not want her to go to jail. So I would like to be the stink bug. Usually we say fly, but stink bugs are, they're like creepy, man, because you don't even know they're there until you look up and you see them. But I wouldn't mind being the stink bug on the wall. When he got home. Because now he has to contend. With his family. For him to stand up there and say. I forgive you. And I'm not going to put that on the rest of the family. Because the moms did not say that. When she was on the stand. But when you hear black people. Tell a killer. Of a loved one. I forgive you. And I only wish the best for you then wouldn't it be hypocritical for them to sue the Dallas Police Department? Because if you really forgave her, there would be no lawsuit. You would not be looking for financial damages. So it would be hypocritical for them to try to sue the Dallas Police Department. When they were in agreement, even with the judge coming down, giving her a hug and crying and given her a Bible and then prayed with her. I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. Not even on television. There were times where judge this, uh, judges shed a tear or two. 
but never did they come down and give the murderer a fi uh, give the murderer a Bible and then prayed with her with tears in their eyes. And that right there tells you that the sentencing, the punishment was unjust. They gave her 10 years and she will not serve 10 years. She would more than likely be out maybe five. But she's doing no real time for murdering an unarmed man. He was in his own home. Chilling, watching TV, eating ice cream. With cookies in it. And she broke in there and took his life. The door was cracked open. It makes no sense. It makes no sense that she happened to be in the wrong apartment. She parked on the wrong side, number one. She walks inside the wrong apartment with a red carpet in front of it. The door was cracked open. Now, I was talking to a family member last night. And thinking about that, why her being a cop, even if she thought that was her, her apartment, why was she rushing to a house or an apartment where the door is cracked open? You're just going to rush in there with your weapon drawn and you saying, let me see your hands, which nobody else in the building heard it. They questioned the witnesses and they didn't hear her yell saying, let me see your hands. They didn't hear that. Now, myself personally, had I walked up and saw my door cracked open, I would have stood to the side and just took my hands, you can't see me from the angle, and I would have like slowly opened the door to see what's going on in there. I would have had my firearm drawn, but I would have went in there real slowly, opened the door, and if I didn't see anyone, I would have yelled, who's in here, right? And if the dude would have showed himself, that would have gave me enough time to look around to see where I am. What are you doing in my home? What are you doing here? This is my house. And I would have looked around more because even when I did work for Brinks, they always stress being aware of your environment and she's being a cop. She's just gonna walk in there even if she had tunnel vision and her eye was, eyes were focused on him only. Walking up in there. Without her taking the time out to look around, if someone else was in there, they could have sideswiped her. They could have came from the side because her attention, her focus was not on what's around her, but what was straight ahead of her. You ever see on TV when somebody walk into a house, just walk up in there and what are you doing in my house? And all of a sudden somebody cut, knock them, knock them out they, they, because they didn't see that other person. To their flank. They didn't see that because they're focused on the person that they see ahead of them. But when you are a trained law enforcement officer, you should have proceeded with caution before going up in that place. When your door is cracked open and you see somebody and I'm wondering if she responded that way because of the fact that he was black. If that was a white man in her apartment. Just say that that was her apartment and that was a white man. Would she have been so quick to shoot? But because of the fact that was a black man, it makes me wonder if that was not a setup, if that was not a hit. So what do you guys think about that? There's just a lot of holes in that story, you know. But I would love to be the stink bug on the wall to see how the family respond to what the brother did and one other thing too when the moms was on the stand I noticed she kept saying that Botham called her Botham came to see her Botham wanted to see her Botham did this for her she kept saying me and then when the interviewer asked about the husband she just kind of had a look on her face oh they get along good and then talked about how the husband was a preacher and Botham challenges him on his sermons and then that was it but then she went back to, he came to see me. And then she tried to bring up the father again. 
I really don't think that Botham and the father got along too well. I think that the family is not as tight as they appear to be to some people. Because the father was hardly mentioned. He wasn't there. I didn't see him there. And then for the brother to get on stand and go contrary to the, to the mother, to the family, and say he loved her, didn't want her to do any jail time, and wished her the best, and then gave her a hug. And then the judge hugs her with tears and gives her a Bible and prays for her. The, the guard is stroking her hair. What is wrong with these black people? But it's a demon crap society we're living in. See, that's the results of who you choose, what side you're on. So it makes an, it doesn't make sense. There's a lot of holes in the story. It's confusing. I've never seen anything like this before in my life. So feedback, tell me what you think. Subscribe, share the video. Uh, click on the Cash App button and donate to the channel. Until next time. I'm fearless.